opportunity of life and it has it gives us survival advantage but here is question number 57 so question number 57 please note it down in your copy reproduction is essential uh, essentially a phenomena that is not for survival means uh, we cannot say that it is uh, necessary for survival means if an organism stop reproducing it it uh, it will die or he will die or she will die okay so it is not necessary there are so, so many couples that used to uh, they never reproduce okay like burka bee mule human couples okay so they never reproduce but still we can say that but still we can say that what we can say that uh, reproduction is essential uh, essential why reproduction is essential so please note it down that let me explain you this one please note this question here copy question number 57 And Jobita, uh, you attended this. Uh, who is Dr. Sudha? Jaslyn? Hmm? Hashit, why were you absent in the previous class? I think so. Who were absent? Who attended the previous class? Let me check. Saima. Uh, Saima was on fifth grade in reproduction. Okay. Do this one, dear students. Have you noted this one? Question number nine. 257, sorry. Have you noted? Yes, yes sir. So we can simply say that that reproduction is not an essential life process. We we know that. What are the uh, essential life process? Let, uh, please tell me what are the essential life process. If I talk about the life process, what are the essential respiration? Life respiration. respiration. Okay. Okay. Respir okay. Respiration. Respiration. Okay. Nutrition. 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 Okay. Transportation. Transportation and removal of waste product that is excretion okay these are the essential life process here reproduction is not necessary okay but every living organism perform all these life processes. these are four four one okay so we can simply say here that reproduction is an essential life process okay is is not an essential life process but reproduction ensures the continuity of life we can say that reproduction ensures us the continuity of life okay that we are not going to extend Moreover, we can say that reproduction uh, gives us survival advantage because during reproduction, variation occurs. You know, reproductions help us, uh, means variations occur during reproduction because of DNA copying that we have discussed in the previous class. And those students who were absent in the previous class, please watch the lecture. That is very important. That was done on 21. On 21, okay? So please, you can check it, uh, the playlist, okay? So, if I'm talking about that reproduction ensure the continuity of life and reproductions, uh, there are so many variations take place during the type of reproduction. So, that help us to live or adapt the life according to the changing environment. That I have explained you in the previous class, for example, with the example of red beetles and green beetles. So, if uh, during the DNA copying or during the uh, DNA copying, there is a change in DNA take place. Due to that, the red beetles becomes green in color. So that green color gives the survival advantage, camouflage advantage, okay? Or uh, this uh, green color helps helps the uh, beetle to uh, that it can hide itself in, uh, in, in the leaves and can save, uh, save itself from its predators, okay? So if I'm just saying here that what is actually, uh, we can simply say that what actually uh, reproduction is doing here, reproduction help us to ensure the continuity of life and and the variations that occurs during reproductions help us uh, to give uh, 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 or uh, to help help us in giving the better uh, life. Okay, uh, okay, you understood. According to the changing environment. So if I write this answer accordingly, so what what will I write here? So wait a minute. So please note the answer here. 
reproduction is not a not a life process i.e reproduction is not an essential criteria to decide whether something is living or not but reproduction ensure the continuity of life reproduction results in variation which help in organism to provide better living condition according to the changing environment okay please note it down In the previous science test, were you were the question were tough? Only uh, Abir scored twenty one. Uh, other students are not performing well. Some of the students get uh, detected means ten ten marks are detected some with for some of the students. So this is a very we can say that how why why are you, is there any problem in a specific topic? Most of the students don't know how to write the double circulatory system and how, what is double circulation double circulatory system. There's a basic, basic question. They are not able to write that one. So why have you not prepared up for the test? Hmm, Jovita? Sir, I got uh, 17 and a few marks I left because the questions were not from my topic. It was not coming from my exam. So I didn't study those topics. Who is speaking? Hashid? Who is speaking? Uh, wait a minute, let me check who is speaking. I have to check the date. Okay, now Hashid is speaking. Huh? Some of the topics were not coming, so that's why you left the those topics. So, which topic? No, sir, not uh, I left the questions uh, that were not coming from my exam. So, which questions were that? In the last previous test, I was just asking. Yes, sir, revision test 2, right? Hmm? Revision test 2. No, three, three. So three, I didn't attempt, sir. You didn't attempt. Okay. So do this one done. Done, dear students. Noted. No, sir. Noted down. Is present today, Hashid. Guys, you didn't give the test. Huh? Twice. I didn't check your yes, copy. Sir. Why didn't you give the test? No, I, I was having exam. It finished today only. I was having three weeks. That's okay. why I didn't have the presentation. Okay, okay, okay. But it is necessary that you must give a, a 45 minutes just take just for exam. Just give the right exam. Okay, done. Everybody done? Noted this one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if a question comes in examination that uh, you know that during uh, asexual method of reproductions, the uh, exact copy or means almost an organism is clone of, uh, of the parent. Okay. So if the question is being asked that what is a clone and how in asexual method of reproduction, an organism is exact copy of its parents. Okay. So how will you write that answer? Let me have this 39 chromosome. We have this question. Question number 30, please note it down. What is a clone and how I do offspring formed by asexual method of reproduction exhibit remarkable sim similarities? Question number 30.
done noted noted tell me fast done sir done okay so if i talk about this one that uh, during uh, what is a clone clone is an exact copy of a of a we can say that uh, clone is an ex, uh, exact copy of a parent of a which is produced during asexual method of reproduction and uh, why do offspring formed by asexual method of reproduction exhibit remarkable similarities can can anybody in the class answer me this question because they only have one uh, parent and uh, uh, they reproduce by cloning they reproduce so, by uh, the they yeah so there's only a single parent uh, so uh, it will have the same thing uh, yeah, same yeah. Uh, okay okay so yeah your your answer is correct so because in asexual method of reproduction only one parent or single parent dna is involved so like in a sexual method of reproduction two parents in dna is involved so that's why we have we can simply say that uh, the similarities are of both the parents we in, uh, in sexual method of reproduction we are just going to have the characteristics of both the parents male and female both but in asexual method of reproduction, no such parent, no two parents are involvement is taking place. Only a single parent DNA is being divided. So we can simply say here that uh, almost the parent in uh, sorry of spring is exact copy or a clone of uh, of their parent. Okay. So please note note the same answer. Note the answer for this question here. So answer this question, not this question, please. And when you done, please let me okay. Note it fast, everybody. What is clone? And this is the next part of that portion. Okay. During organism reproduced by sexual method of reproduction are exact copy of their parent because here is only single parent DNA is involved. Okay. done yes, Ashin, Jubita, done so why are you not replying if you have done this one then sir everybody done please turn on your camera everybody please turn on your camera let me check whether you are writing or not jasling madhya sir my camera isn't working i'll join a different device and come so if I'm talking about this one, that the next question, uh, if I talk about next in the next question, what is our next question here? Question number 31, how offspring and parent organism 
uh, that are reproducing by sexual method or sexually have same number of chromosomes. Question number 31. Note question number 31. Noted? Noted? Question number 31? No, sir. Noted fast. Done, everybody. Yes. Should I move forward? Okay. So, if I talk about this one, that uh, how the number of chromosomes is maintained in uh, sexual method of reproduction. So, I have explained you this one in the previous class also that during sexual method of reproduction. The, the gamete formation is taking place, okay? And gametes are going to have half number of chromosomes. So if I talk about this one, that gamete, about the gametes, so gametes are going to have half number of chromosomes. For example, for example, if I'm having, uh, this is male parent, okay? Male parent, okay? And this is female parent, okay? So their gametes, they are going to have 46 chromosome right now. But when their gametes, when the gamete forms, the male gamete is going to have 23 chromosome. Okay, 23 chromosomes. This is gamete, male gamete. And this is female gamete. It is also going to have 23 chromosomes. Okay, it's female gamete, female gamete. So when they fuse together, they again form, they again form, uh, 46, okay, which is going to have equivalent number of chromosome that is called zygote. And this zygote is going to have equivalent number of chromosome that a uh, normal human being is going to have, okay. So, this halving of chromosome, this halving of chromosome during gamete formation, okay, results, results where, or we can say that this gamete that are going to have half number of chromosomes, when they fuse together, they again give a diploid zygote or a or we can say that the number of chromosomes are maintained again. Okay, so this is the way that how during sexual method of reproduction, the number of chromosomes are uh, maintained or their numbers remain constant. Because even if we are getting 50% from male, 50% from female, because in gametes, we have half number of chromosomes. Okay, everybody understood? Everybody understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So let me show you this one that uh, note, note this question during sexual method of reproduction. During sexual method of reproduction, gamete that is going to have n. What does n represent? n represent half number of chromosome and 2n represent full. Okay, so n bracket. Okay. Uh, during sexual method, method of reproduction, gametes of male and female which are having half number of chromosomes. Then somatic cells. Somatic cells means normal cells fuse together to form zygote. Zygote is 2N. Okay, that is which is diploid. Okay. Uh, for example, in human being, 23 male and 23 female chromosomes fuse together to form 46 chromosomes equivalent to human body. Okay. Chromosome, which is equivalent, which is equivalent to human body. 
body cells other than gamete. Okay. So that's that's all. Note it down, please. Dubita, are you writing? Vidwan, why have you turned off your camera? Uh, so if I turn on, then the sound doesn't come. This is a new technique. Yes, so can you make it real big? <laughs> Amar? Amar? Yes, so can, you, can you make it real big? Are you saying something? Yes, can I? So can you, uh, like... Uh, Explain it again. No, sir, uh, I can't see the full screen. You can't see the full screen. Okay, yeah. so let me show you this one again. Is it visible to you now? Uh, yeah. Okay, I know that what, what problem you were having. Note it. Done? Yes, sir. Sir? Mm -hmm. Should we write the example also? Yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> I have written it for you. Then why are you not writing this one? So what if one of the parents uh, will give uh, like uh, more than 23 chromosomes? Then the new species will be wrong. Yes, we will not remain human beings. We will become some other organism. And it is not possible that in human beings a parent can give less or more than 23. And if it if, if it happened accidentally, then we consider that organism or the baby that born is going to have some genetic disorder. Noted? Noting, sir. Go on, sir. Done, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Should I move forward? Yes, sir. sir. Yes. Okay, if anyone having a problem, let me know. If everyone is still right. Is anyone in the class right, is still writing? Should I move to the back slide? Okay, so we have done this one in the previous class. Have you we, have we learned this binary fusion? Check, check in your notes. Have we learned that what is fusion? We have started the asexual method of reproduction. So have we written this one? That what is asexual method of, uh, what is asexual mode of reproduction and uh, the definition of this one? We have noted this one. Okay, so let's start with the asexual method of reproduction. There are different, different types of uh, asexual method of reproduction or we can say that there are different, different mode. Okay, like spore formation, budding, uh, binary fusion, fragmentation, regeneration. Okay, they are, so they are different different types of asexual method of reproduction. So what we are studying here, we are just studying asexual method of reproduction or the type of asexual method of reproduction. Okay, in animals, we are just talking about animals. Okay, so have you studied, have you noted this one, fusion? Tell me. Please take your notes. 
So I say again. I'm asking that have you studied this region? Should yes, I study? Yes, studied. Okay, note it down again. If nobody is responding, then it means that you have not written. So if I'm talking about this one, that what is fission? Fission, in fission, there is an organism, okay? And or generally it happens in this unicellular organism in which a cell, a single cell divides into two halves, okay? So if a cell is dividing into two halves, what does it mean? A new organism is formed. And this type of fission is called binary fission because bi means two. Binary fission means an organism is divided into two halves, okay? And here simple, a genetic material, uh, here the cell first copy itself means uh, what what is it going to have what is going to do? the cell is going to copy itself first okay like if i'm talking about this one and what is it copying first it is copying its genetic material dna okay so if it is this this one dna so first it will initially copy its dna okay and when the cell is copy when the dna is being copied in, inside the nucleus okay this is original dna then copy dna then this nucleus divides into two halves. Then this nucleus divides like this. A cell is going to copy like this one. Okay, and this DNA, and this DNA, and then suddenly after this, this the cell, the new cells are formed. Okay, two new cells, two new daughter cells are formed. So we can consider this one. This is a binary fusion in which. A cell is being divided by mitotic division. And you know what is mitotic division? The other cell divides by two processes. One is mitosis, another one is, another one is meiosis. So mitotic division means the single parent division uh, DNA is involved and it is just copying its whole DNA. This type of division is called mitotic division. Okay. To understand everybody that we have discussed in the previous class also. Yes. So what if I'm talking about the binary fusion? So first of all, note it down that what is fusion? Fusion is simple in which an organism divides into two or more uh, means part. Each uh, is able to produce new organism. Note it down, please. Note it down fast. Like you can see here that uh, in the NCRT, okay, that this is an amoeba, okay, and it is divided into two halves. The nucleus is first being copied and then it is being divided into two halves, okay. So, here amoeba is an example. Many bacteria protozoa simply builds uh, split into two halves during cell division, okay, and in organisms such as amoeba, is split into two cells during, during division, okay, and it can take place in any plane. If I'm talking about them, that it can take place in any plane, not it will uh, divide like uh, like horizontally or vertically. No, it can divide in any plane. Okay, got it? Got it? Yes, and uh, this is this is called binary fusion. This is called binary fusion. However, in some organism, like we are talking about, okay, uh, so, uh, we can take means there is an organization. We cannot say that uh, they can divide into two half. For example, here like in Lashmania, Lashmania, you see that they are just copying itself, the two cells are there, but they are dividing, they are not dividing, uh, like horizontally, they are not dividing, they are dividing vertically, okay? So we can say that, uh, some, uh, however, some in some unicellular organism, okay, shows somewhat more organization for their body, such as, such as uh, seen in Lashmania, that is called Kalazar, which have a wipe like structure and one end of cell. In such cell, the binary fusion occurs in a definite orientation, orientation, okay, to these structures. Means we are simply saying that here that in Leishmania, we are just going to have the body design. There is a body design and it, it does not occur in any plane. Uh, okay, you cannot cut it. Okay, so it can it, it, it divides like this way. Okay, got it? And then it, it divides into two halves. So uh, please. Uh, First, I'm just going to, first you need to write it here, this this one, 
that what is binary fusion. So note the definition of binary fusion here from here. Note this one. That in, in binary prison, the cell divides into two half by simple mitotic division. And both organisms receive equal genetic material and grows as a new individual. Please note it down. Example, amoeba, paramecium. Done? Noted? Nobody is responding. Noted fast. So by in binary fusion only, we can simply say that in binary fusion, the cell is going to split in, in, in uh, into two halves, okay? And there are various types of binary fusion. Uh, one is the simple that in Abiva, that it uh, the organism can divide in any plane. But in Leishmania or, or Kala Azar, we can simply say that there that has a, some symmetrical and that is split into two halves by uh, some orientation, okay? It means there is some orientation of our body design is there. It cannot split into any halves in any, in any plane, okay? So have you noted this one? Yes. Sir. Done everybody? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, please note this one also, this portion from the NCRT. That, however, in some unicellular organisms, okay, such as, uh, such as Leishmania, which is color as a, okay, how, uh, however, in some unicellular organisms, don't write this one. Okay, okay. Note this whole paragraph fast. Or you can write it like this way. Wait a minute. Stop writing. I'm just going to short it for you, okay? If my pen is not coming here, okay? So if you are writing like this way, you can write it like this in a simple manner. So you can write this one. That in Lashmania, uh, which is Kala Azar, okay, in Lashmania, which is Kala Azar, okay, binary fusions occur in different uh, in different orientation in relation to, note it down. in relation to these organisms.
means other organism can uh, can divide into two half in any or any orientation but in kalazar we have or leishmania we have a special a special or a definite orientation that organism will divide like this way okay got it And what's the name of this student who is Jonah? Jonah. Sir, Justin, I can't rename myself. Okay, what's your name? Jesslyn. Jesslyn, Jesslyn. Jesslyn, I have written. So, Hashid, Jobita, Ridwan, Ammar, Faiz, Jesslyn. Yes, singer. sir. And who is... Who is Whose name I have not written here? Madhi, I have not written. To check whether who is not attending the class in the month and how many students are not attending. Okay. So that I can scold on you that why are you not attending your class? Okay. So if I'm talking about the next one, that what is multiple fusion? Okay. So multiple fusion is just, we can simply say that in multiple fusion, uh, first of all, a cell divides within, uh, means the nucleus divides several times within the cells. Okay. For example, if I talk about this one, uh, let this is a cell. Okay. And within the cell, we can simply say here that the nucleus divides several times. And this happened during unfavorable conditions. When there is an unfavorable conditions, then this cell divides several times within the, uh, sorry, nucleus divides several times within the cell. And then each nucleus collects some cytoplasm and then split into many, many new organisms. Okay. So we can say that during unfavorable condition, when there is an unfavorable condition is going to take place, then during that time, uh, we can simply say that the nucleus divides several times and then each nucleus collects some cytoplasm. Okay. Each nucleus is going to collect some cytoplasm and then get separated. And we can say that this happens when the favorable condition arises, okay? So if there is very heat, high humidity, okay? Uh, that's not suitable condition for reproduction. So within the organism, the nucleus divides several times. And when the favorable condition arises, then each nucleus collects some cytoplasm and then it behaves as a new organism. Everybody understood? Understood? Yes. yes so note it down, uh, what is multiple fusion? So in this process, parental body divides a mitotically to produce many small nuclei. Later, each nuclei collects some cytoplasm and form new organism. Put it down. Uh, sir, is it like, can we say that in multiple fission, many daughter cells are formed? Yeah, yeah. Why we can't say this one? Yes, okay. many daughter cells are formed simultaneously. This is written in NCRT also. That's, uh, for example, 
like we have marrier parasitic plasmodium in plasmodium the cell divides into many daughter cells simultaneously by multiple fusion okay so this is multiple fusion okay you understood multiple fusion yeah. in multiple fusion many daughter cells are formed and this occurs in the in the unfavorable conditions okay got it okay yes sir so everybody uh, noted how much time does it takes a plasmodium uh, cell to re uh, again reproduce? Uh, actually, I don't have the information on this one. So if I, uh, I can Google this one, okay, because it has never been asked by any student. So I don't have this information, but you know that malaria will take only five to three to five days. I think so, but this is my guess, okay so that they are just um, but uh, cell divides uh, where it means i'm not saying that it take only uh, a cell if a cell is going to have means i'm just saying that if a patient is infected with malaria and in three to five days the platelets will be down and the whole body will going to if, get affected so but bacteria if i'm talking about this plasmodium so it may take about uh Plasmodium, yes, it, it may take some time to reproduce. Oh, so days are not necessary. We can say that, let me check you, check this one because we are just studying and we are just having. So let me check this one that how many time, how much time. Time does, does. So, uh, yeah, it is taking seven to uh, uh, saprophyte. We can say this one that this is showing on Google that malaria infection begins infected uh, female infected mosquito, mosquito and quickly in, into the liver. Saprophytes multiply essentially in the liver over seven to ten days, causing causing no symptoms. So they are they are just multiplying, but we cannot say that it will take uh, seven to eight days for a cell. His whole body will be get infected in seven to eight days. Okay. Okay. Got it. So yes. it is not necessary that only a plant is going to, sorry, only a cell. For example, this are many. This is going to give you this one, and now this these cells again, again going to reproduce by this method. These cells start. So can you imagine that in how many in a in a very small span of time, this from one plasmodium, we can have mm. a, a numerous. Uh, cells, infinite number of cells means there can be a, a large number of cells within because even if they divide five, five times, for example, if they are dividing, one cell is dividing into 100 cells, then 100 cells are dividing further into 100 cells. So 100 into 100 will be means even if the cell reproduce two times, each cell reproduce two times, then it is going to have 10,000. And then yes. 10,000 yeah. again divides into, into next 100 that will give you uh, 10 leg cells. So in the third time, we are going to have 10 leg cells. So this is very uh, fast process. Okay. So, so if I talk about this one, that is budding. Budding is another process okay, uh, of reproduction in, uh, or we can say that is another asexual method of reproduction. And what happens in buddings, uh, you know very well that in buddings, there is an, a small or growth, we call it bud. When an organism may get mature, it, it occurs generally in simple organism, okay? We cannot reproduce by bird, birding. So if there is an organism that are very simple, that are very primitive, in that organism generally uh, an outgrowth, like, like I'm going to example, give an example of Hydra. So if I'm talking about Hydra, so in Hydra, when Hydra get mature, there is a small outgrowth or positions arises from the sideways of the body, okay? And later it grew, keep on growing like this one. This is an outgrowth here. Okay, and it's keep on growing. And later, this 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 outgrowth we call it bud. And later, this bud get detached, and they start behaving as a new organism. So what 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 I'm going to write here is that in this process, parental animals produce an outgrowth called bud. Later, later, this bud get detached from the parent body and behaving as a new organism. Okay, okay. Example, hydra, which is a freshwater organism produced by reproduced by budding. So please note it down.
Shweb is absent, na? Shweb is not present in the class. Yes, sir. Don't say. Okay, done? Yes, sir. So this is a very simple because this topic, when we are just going to study this uh, one, when this chapter become more interesting, when we start studying the sexual method of reproductions in plants and animals. So this is just, we are just going to write here, yes. Only we are just going to write the things that are being given to us. So what is budding? If I talk about budding in yeast, so yeast in yeast, this budding means yeast also reproduced by budding, okay? So if I talk about budding, so budding, uh, we can simply say that, that Yeast is a unicellular fungus. Yeast is a unicellular fungus, okay, like fungi. So when yeast get mature, uh, a small position arises over the yeast and later it get converted into a bud. When this bud get mature, a new bud arises over it. And this process remains three to four times, means it pro this process remains continued for three to four, four times. And what is going to happen is, then this each bud get deattached and form new organism. So if I talk about this one, that what is budding and budding is also found in organism like yeast. Yeast is a unicellular fungus. When yeast produced by budding, a small projection, when yeast produced by budding, a small projection arises on upper part of the cell, on the upper part of the cell, which further grows, which further grows and form bud, which further grows and form bud okay later a new bud arises on the previous bud later a new bud arises on the previous bud and this process remains continue for three to four times after these the bud get detached and form new individuals please note it down please note it down In dear students, it is once that everyone has to do the homework. From the next class, I will check whether you have done your homework or not. So everyone has to do your homework, okay? This class is not so much important. I'm going to, means if you are doing only these classes and you are not doing performing your homework, you are not studying, you are not self-studying, then it will create a, means it is must that what we are teaching you right now, you must have to revise that one at home. And this can, this revi this revision can be done when you are performing the homework. Okay, so homework is very important. That has been given to you every in every class. Okay, after the every class, you receive the homework. Okay, related to the topic that we have studied. So everyone is requested to please do your homework on time. Okay, then everybody noted this one. This is very simple. That budding in east, budding in east. Should I move forward? Say writing. Note it fast. We'll extend this class for the next five minutes, okay? So we will end the class for 30, 35. So nobody is request, everyone is requested to join the class till 35. No one is going to leave at 30. Done? No, sir. Not it.
go on. Done, everybody. Done? No, sir. Noted. Done, sir. Everyone done? done? Sir. Yes, okay. sir. The next one is a spore formation. Okay, and what is spore formation? Let me explain you. This is similar to that of uh, a spore formation is similar to that of uh, multiple fusion. Okay, that you have seen in the uh, bread mold. This is bread. Okay, and when this bread, uh, when you keep this bread for a long time uh, at your home, then this bread, piece of bread, okay, uh, becomes green in color in the moisture okay and this a this is a fungus arises over it so i'm just going to zoom this one because this is a very small particle tiny particle that we have taken from this bread and this bread is going to have some thread like structures okay that thread like structure is called hyphae hyphae and over this the bulb like structures arises and we called it sporangium what we called it is sporangium. And what is this? This is a fungus. This is a fungus. Na a name of this fungus is rhizopus. What is the name of this fungus? Rhizopus. <laughs> okay, so this is over the bread mold. I have just made this one uh, with, with lag times of uh, uh, magnified. Okay, so we can say that this is very much magnified. So, this is a bulb-like structure called sporangium and within the sporangium, the nucleus divides several times as it was dividing in the multiple fusion. The nucleus divides several times. Here is also the nucleus is dividing several times. In the bulb-like structure, this bulb-like structure called sporangium. And this nucleus dividing within the sporangium take place in the in the uh, we can simply say that during unfavorable conditions, when there is unfavorable, both are similar. That here also nucleus is dividing several times. Okay, and in it, it also happens in the unfavorable condition. This is multiple fusion, multiple fusion. Okay, and here also within the sporangium, the nucleus is dividing several times, and later each nucleus collects some cytoplasm and form a spore. Spore and here also each nucleus collects some cytoplasm and then form a new organism. But here they form a new organism like plasma. But here, when the nucleus collects some cytoplasm, then they form a spore and they remain inside this one. Inside this spore enzyme. Okay. And this this is called a spore. And what is a spore? A spore is a minute propagule or a minute capsule. That has capability to give rise to new individual. What I'm saying here, let me explain you that that a spore is anything or a, is is a, a is a capsule like a structure or a very minute particle, which when buried under the soil or which which when come on, uh, on the soil, it has capability to give rise to new organism. Okay, so fungi is lies between plants and animal. Neither it is plant nor it is animal. Fungi are heterotrophs because they can't prepare their own food. That is the characteristics of uh, that of animals. And we can say that uh, they have cell wall made up of chitin. Okay. And that is the characteristics of plants. So fungi have the, both the characteristics of plants and animals. And they are the intermediate between plants and animals. So what I'm saying here that in fungi like rhizopus, okay, the, uh, there is a bulb-like structure called sporangium. And within the sporangium, the nucleus divides several times. And later, each nucleus collects some cytoplasm and form a spore. And these spores are the minute propagule or minute capsule that has capability to give rise to new individual. So when the favorable condition arises, these spores get burst. When the favorable condition arises, these sporangium, these sporangium get burst 
and these spores are scattered. These spores are scattered. Okay. And where they fall, they give rise to new plant, a new fungi, okay, new rhizopus. And only rhizopus, or we can say the fungi and bacteria grow by spore formation. So if I uh, what I have written here, let me explain you this one. That spore is another method of uh, is another essential method of reproduction. Generally happens in fungi and bacteria. And here I'm explaining that what a spore is. A spore is a minute capsule which has capability to divide and, and form new individual. And spore has the capability to divide and it can give rise to new individual. So what happened in the spore formation? In some fungi like rhizopus, like rhizopus, rhizopus, rhizopus is a type of fungi, okay? Like rhizopus, a bulb-like structure formed called sporangium. A bulb-like structure is formed. This is called sporangium. And these are sporangium, okay? Sporangium. Okay, so so many times in, in the examination it is being asked that what is sporangium, okay? And what is the name of this thread-like structure over which sporangium or bulb-like structure is present? That is, this thread-like structure is called, is called hyphae. But we called it hyphae, okay? So, now come again, uh, now come to the point. In fungi like rhizopus, a bulb-like structure is formed called sporangium. Under favorable condition, when the favorable condition comes, when there is a favorable condition, okay? Uh, sorry, under unfavorable condition, when there is no uh, favorable condition outside, the temperature is very high, temperature is not suitable for the reproduction, then within the sporangium, the nucleus divides several times. So it is written within the sporangium. Uh, okay, the nucleus divide several times within the sporangium and collect some cytoplasm and thus form a spore. When the nucleus collects some cytoplasm, then it forms a spore. When the favorable condition arises, when the favorable condition comes, again, when there is a normal temperature, when there is no humidity, extra excess humidity. So there is a favorable condition for, uh, for reproduction. So when the favorable condition arises, the sporangium get burst and spores are scattered everywhere. Okay, these spores are scattered everywhere, which result in the formation of new organism on germination. So when these spore falls uh, somewhere, the new organism, new plants or new fungi, sorry, uh, grows from there, okay? So you note it down in your copy, please, this one, note it down. Please note it down. And then you can leave. Yes, Hashid, if you have done this one, then you can leave.
done. Or it's still writing. Jobita, Jasleen, Madiha, Rilwan, five. Still writing. Still writing. Okay, okay. Note it. There's no hurry. Note it easy. Okay. Don't say. Sorry, Dutch, should I leave? Okay, okay. Okay, okay bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Hands up, finished. Finished. Uh, so, those who have done can leave, okay? Bye, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Everyone. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay.